Hello everyone. Welcome to the course of Fundamentals of IoT, in short FIOT. In today's class, we are going to learn about SDN for IoT. We have already seen what is SDN, right? It's a software defining networking. Okay. So uh, this particular software defining networking with respect to IoT, what are the components, how the SDN architecture work, okay? What are the different models, how an SDN is compared with the traditional one? What are the advantages of SDN and disadvantages we are going to see in this class? Okay, all these concepts can be applicable for the IoT as well, okay? So coming to the components of software defining networking, in short SDN, there are mainly three components that make the SDN. They are first one, SDN applications, second one, SDN controller, third one, SDN networking devices, okay? So coming to the SDN applications, so uh, they rely on the requests or the network through the SDN controller using APIs, application peripheral interface. It's a kind of uh, user interfaces through which uh, they rely on the requests or the networks. Coming to the second one, SDN controller, okay? So this particular SDN controller collects the network information from the hardware and sends this information to the various applications, okay? Now, third one, the component is SDN networking devices, okay? So these SDN network devices helps in forwarding and data processing tasks, okay? So on the whole, there are three applications, controller and networking devices. Now let's see uh, the overview of an SDN architecture. So a typical SDN architecture consists of three layers. First one is the application layer. Second one is the control layer. Third one is the infrastructure layer, okay? So coming to the application layer, it contains the typical network applications like uh, intrusion detection, firewall or load balancing, okay? So intrusion detection and firewall is nothing but it protects us from some kind of uh, uh, hacking or any kind of viruses. And not only that, whenever there is a huge traffic, data traffic, okay, the load can be balanced easily, okay? Coming to the next one, control layer. It consists of SDN controller, uh, which acts as the brain of the network, okay? This controller looks over all the uh, data packet management and uh, controlling everything. It also allows hardware abstraction to the applications written on top of it, okay? So not only uh, controls the data packet related thing, and it also uh, look after the hardware abstraction as well, okay? And coming to the infrastructure layer, it consists of physical switches, okay, which form the data plane and carries out the actual movement of data packets, okay? So, so these layers, okay? So these layers communicate with the set of interfaces called northbound APIs as well as southbound APIs, okay? Now let's see what is this particular northbound API as well as southbound API. Northbound APIs is nothing but it's an interface between application layer as well as control layer, okay? Whereas coming to the southbound APIs, it's uh, a layer between or an interface or path between the control layer as well as the infrastructure layer, okay? Let's see the diagram, block diagram of the C. So this is the application layer, which is having routing, load, balancing, etc. And the middle one is the control layer or the SDN controller. And the last one is the infrastructure layer, which will be having switches, data plane, etc. Okay. So the interface between the application layer and the control layer can be considered as the northbound APIs. And the interface between the control layer as well as the infrastructure layer can be considered as the southbound APIs. Okay. Now, let's see different models of SDN. Okay. So, uh, so there are several models of a SDN, okay, which are very much widely used. First one is the open SDN. Second one is SDN via APIs. Third one is SDN via hypervisor based overlay network. Okay. We are going to see what are those. Okay. Fourth one is the hybrid SDN. Okay. Now let's see what is the open SDN. See, open SDN is implemented using open flow switch. Okay. So it is almost a straightforward implementation of an SDN. Okay. So in open SDN, what happens is 
the controller communicates with the switches using southbound API. Southbound API means we have already seen, right? Southbound API means it's a layer or the interface between the control layer as well as the infrastructure layer, okay? So, so it uh, communicates with the, okay, uh, switches using southbound API with the help of the open flow protocol, okay? So, let's see how the diagram will be. So, open SDN. So, almost all the SDN applications are connected to the controller and this controller is connected to the network devices, okay, through an open flow protocol. So, it's a kind of switching mechanism where it will be access to the um, southbound APIs, okay. Now, coming to the second one, SDN, SDN via APIs, okay. So, in SDN through APIs, the functions uh, in remote devices like switches, okay, are uh, invoked or uh, uh, provoked, okay, using conventional method, okay. So, it can be like a command line interface, okay, or some other uh, interfaces kind of thing, okay. So, and the newer methods are like uh, nowadays what we are using is APIs, okay. So, here the devices are provided with the control pins, enabling the controller to manipulate the remote devices using API, okay. Previously, it was the command line interface. Now, almost everybody, all the softwares are using APIs, okay. So, previous it was a CLA, command line interface. Now, it's an API. So, the control pins will be uh, enabling the controller to manipulate this particular APIs, okay. So, SDN uh, via APIs can be done through this particular model, okay. Now, coming to the SDN via hypervisor based overlay network. So, in this, SDN uh, through hypervisor means, okay. So, here the physical devices configuration will not be changed, okay. It will be remaining unchanged, but the hypervisor uh, based overlay networks, okay, uh, will be created over the physical network, okay. So, only the devices which are at the edge of the uh, physical network are connected to this virtualized network, okay. So, that means all the hypervisor based overlay network, okay, will be connected to the edge of the physical networks, okay. So, I am going to show you the diagram. You will be easily understanding that. See, SDN via hypervisor. So, you can see all the SDN applications. All the SDN applications are connected to the SDN controller and this SDN controller is having an hypervisor, okay. So, this hypervisor is connected to, see, you have uh, several network devices, right, okay, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, almost 7 network devices are there. But so what's happening, hypervisor with respect to the controller are connected to only the edge devices, if you carefully see here, okay. So, these are the edge devices, which are end of the particular all network devices and which are nearer to the hypervisor, okay. So, these hypervisors are connected to the edge devices through which they establish a particular uh, a virtual network, okay. So, this is how the hypervisor works with respect to the SDN, okay. Now, coming to the fourth one, hybrid SDN. Hybrid networking is a combination of traditional networking with SDN, software defined networking in one network, okay. So, this uh, hybrid uh, SDN helps in uh, supporting different types of functions on a network. So, it will be having both traditional networking as well as software defined networking or both are combined and it helps in functioning of a particular network. Now, let's see what are the differences between software defined networking as well as traditional networking, okay. Now, so, this is just an overview how it is both are differentiated under the software defined networking, okay. Software defined network is a virtual networking approach, whereas traditional network is the old conventional networking approach, okay. Software defined network is a centralized control and traditional network is the distributed control, okay. Now, under the software defined networking, this network can be programmable whenever required according to the uh, application or the requirement, whereas the traditional networking is non-programmable. Software defined network is an open interface, whereas traditional network is a closed interface. In software uh, defined network, data plane and control plane are 
decoupled by the uh, software. Both will be separately uh, functioning. Whereas in a traditional network, both data plane and control plane are mounted on the same plane itself. Both are coupled. Okay. So if you see the diagrams over here, in a traditional okay network, both control plane and data plane are coupled and are combined uh, combined as a single plane. Whereas coming to the software defined network, okay, data plane as well as control plane will be both will be separately uh, functioning. Now coming to the advantages of SDN, the network is programmable as I've already said and hence can be easily modified by the controller whenever required. Okay, so switch hardware becomes cheaper. So compared to uh, some other options. Hardware can be extracted, hence the application can be written on top of the controller independent of the switch vendor. Okay. So not only that, it also provides the best security or the better security with respect to the data uh, traffic monitoring uh, traffic or the deployment security policies, or it can be anything. It's, we are talking regarding the data packets and everything. Okay. Coming to the disadvantages of SDN. Okay. So the central dependency of the network means single point of failure. Okay. Suppose if the whole controller gets corrupted, entire network will be affected and the entire network gets collapsed. And the another disadvantage is the use of SDN on a large scale, okay, may not be properly defined or explored. There will be a lot of issues and problems as well. So this is the overview of SDN with respect to IoT. All these things, all these advantages, disadvantages, comparison with the traditional method okay and the, the models or the components or everything everything will be uh, applicable to the iot also okay same concept is involved in it